today we'll look at the concept of uh, time value of money, which will be very important in uh, evaluating investment uh, decision, what we call the capital budgeting. So we will look at uh, what we call the present value, the future value. Then we'll also look at uh, loan amortization table or schedules. So when we talk of uh, the time value of money in finance, we usually say a thousand shillings today is not equal to a thousand shillings tomorrow. Because one, uh, you are not sure whether you will be there tomorrow. And two, because of uh, issues to do with the purchasing power and inflation, because that inflation will affect the purchasing power and most likely a thousand shillings today will not purchase the same basket of goods tomorrow. So there is that uh, loss or er erosion of value of uh, money that happens over time. So that is why people would prefer a thousand shillings today compared to a thousand shillings tomorrow. Again, you can also get an investment opportunity, then you make that investment that you get that particular uh, amount. So I hope I hope the concept is clear. Yeah. I'll explain a shilling today is more is worth more than a shilling uh, tomorrow, because people would re, uh, prefer to receive the amount now instead of receiving it at a later date. So here we'll be able to look at uh, again techniques that are used for compounding and discounting when now you are converting either the future value to present value or when you're con uh, computing the future value, uh, present value to the future uh, value. So you have said the financial values and decision can be assessed uh, using either the future value or the present value technique. And these uh, techniques uh, adopt di different approaches. For instance, when we talk of uh, the future value, this will measure the cash flow at some future point in time. And this is usually at the end of the project. Because when we talk of future, this is uh, one year, two years from now, the time when you are making the investment. So I've said, this topic has a lot of application in capital budgeting, where you want to make the decision today, but this cash flow will happen in future. So you must convert those future cash flows into present value, because the decision to invest money, you are making it now. Then from there, you'll be able to know whether a project is viable uh, or not. So when we talk of future value technique, this is whereby uh, we are talking about compounding. Either you can compound annually, like we are going to see through the computation, or you can be able to compound semi-annually or quarterly. So that is one of the technique that is used to be able to convert the present to the future uh, value. Then the other thing, <clears throat> I hope I'm clear, Bill. Eh? Yeah. So the opposite of the future value is the present value, and the opposite of compounding is discounting. So when we talk of uh, these two, you should be able to know it is opposite. Yeah. Because when we talk of uh, when we talk of compounding, this is what you apply when you want to get the future value. When you want to talk about the discounting. This is where you want to convert the amount to the present value so that you can be able to make a decision. So we have said present value, this measures each cash flow at the start of the project life, what you usually call it time zero, because that is the time when you are making that particular uh, investment. So the present value is the current value of the future amount of money or a series of future payment or receipts. And if you want to convert the future value into present value, we have said you do the opposite, what we call the discounting uh, factor. 
So basically, those are two things that represent the extreme opposite. Future value is for the future, like year one, year two, year three, year four. For instance, if you are making an investment, you want to buy a building, and this decision you are making it at time zero, and the amount of money that you will use to buy the building is 25 million. Then based on the information, you can be able to know, for example, in year one, two, three, and uh, four, year one, this building will be able to give you uh, 5 million. Year two, this building will be able to give you 5 million. Year three, the building will be able to give you 10 million. And year four, the building will be able to give you uh, 5 million. So this money coming in in year one and in year two, these are future value, right? Yeah. yeah. Then this 25 million where you are making the investment, the present value it is as at now. The building will require 25 million. So the, time, the point in time, you want to make the decision is what we call a year zero or time zero. Yeah. So this is not the present value, the future value. If you want to make a decision on whether this project is viable, you cannot be able to work with the present value and the future value at the same time. You must either convert, uh, the easier way is to convert this future value to represent the present value because you are making the decision now. I hope the concept is clear. Bill? I'm saying, hello. Uh -huh. The concept is. Yes, I can hear you now. The oh, concept clear. is. So so yeah. you have to convert this clear, eh? Yeah. So you, you have to convert this 5 million, 5 million, 10 million, 5 million to present to represent the present value. And representing this present value, we usually call that discounting. The opposite of discounting is uh, what we are calling compounding, where now you want to make a decision. I want now to give you uh, another decision here. You have some 25, maybe you have uh, 25 have 25 million. Then this 25 million you want to invest in some five years and you'll be getting 8% uh, in terms of uh, return. So if you want to know the amount of money that you, that you will get at the end of the fifth year to compute what we call the future value, to know how much you will get at the end of the year five. This is now what we call uh, compounding. And you can decide to compound annually, you can decide to compound semi-annually, or quarterly, or depending with the mode of um, the payment of the interest. So I hope the distinction is true between the future, it's clear between yeah. the future and the present. Yeah. It's clear. Yeah. Yes. So for example, here, yeah. Here we have the concept which we are now calling uh, compounding. Where we have said two forms of treatment of interest are possible. It could be just be a simple interest where you are getting it uh, uh, at the end of uh, a particular period. Interest where interest is paid or earned on the previous, in the, in, where you love the interest and the, the principal will also earn some other interest. That's what we mean by compounding. 
So you find if the money is being paid semi-annually, that is twice in a year, and your principal, for example, was um, two million. So assuming here you are paying two million, or you be paid two million, then out of this you're supposed to get a return of uh, ten percent every year. So the interest that this is now the principal, the two million is the principal. Then the ten percent represents the interest. So here it's supposed to be ten of two million. So this will give us what? 200,000, right? A bill? Uh, my mic was off. I'm getting it clear. Oh, you are getting it? Eh? Yeah. So if this is now what we call the simple interest, where now you will get a particular percent uh, in a year, 10% per annum. So if this 10% per annum is compounded semi-annually, it yeah. simply means the interest will be paid twice in a month, eh? in, a, in a year. Yeah. So after six months, you will now be liable to get the principal plus the, the first interest. Yeah. So then in the second, in the second uh, period, maybe month six to 12, this amount here, the principal and the first interest will now be treated as the principal and it will earn interest during the second part of the year. So that is what yeah. we mean by the difference between simple interest and compounded uh, interest. So this concept of compounding uh, based on the, the period that uh, you have made the investment, we have a formula that we use to be able to determine uh, the future value. And this is the formula that we use where we say the future value, which is denoted by FV, uh, future value will be equal to the future value will be equal to P O into brackets one plus K raised to power of N. Whereby we have said this, uh, this one P O, this is the principal amount or the present value. This one F V is the future value. This is present, the time when you're making the decision. This is future. You want to determine how the money will be in some future time. Then K here is the interest rate. And N here is the number of periods. It is not the year, it is the number of periods. Periods could be one, it could be two, it could be three, right? Yeah. So sometimes people confuse the N with time. That is not time, it is the number of periods. So that is the formula that we, we use to be able to determine the future value. And this formula here, where you can now see, this is trying to explain how we usually get this, because uh, future value for the year one will be one plus K. That is now uh, raised to power of one. So it is represented here. Then year two, it will future value will it also the present will include the the interest for year one because one plus k here represents the factor that for for the interest that you multiply. So you can now be able to see this is the formula that you use. The future value will be equal to what you have today multiplied by this factor, which is raised to the power of the number of periods that you have. Sure. So for example, we have this illustration here where you have been told, assume that you have just invested, uh, you have just invested 100,000. The investment is expected to earn interest at a rate of 20% compounded annually. So if it is compounded annually, it only means it is uh, once in a year. 
yeah. determine the future value of the investment after three years. So based on this uh, formula that we have, what we have here is the, the future value after three years will be equal to, we have the 100,000 plus one plus K, K is now the 20%, which is equivalent to 0 0.2. And the number of period because it's compounded annually, and the, the t, which is time, is three years, here will be raised to the power of n, which is three. So the future value will be equal to 100,000, 1.2 raised to power of three. So using your calculator, this will give us what? 172,800. It will be 172,800. 